I'm reviewing More Scared of You Than You Are of Me by the Smith Street Band. Wanna be alone, wanna be surrounded, wanna be transient, wanna be grounded, but all the dissonance disappears from me. How many times growing up were you told that a spider was more scared of you than you were of it? And you probably looked at its eight hairy legs and beady row of eyes and thought to yourself, no chance, at least I did. Well, you could say the same of the Smith Street Band and in particular, burly frontman Will Wagner. To see Wagner perform or to be bashed around the ears by his bellowing vocals might have you thinking he's a man with no chinks in his armor. And yet, if there's a recurring theme running through the band's fourth album, it's a very human vulnerability. Which isn't to say there's not plenty of punk rock defiance and strength throughout. Look at the song Passiona, in which Wagner yells music industry professionals can go fuck themselves, but then in the same song he sings of having panic attacks on German TV. Indeed, Wagner's lyrics are the not-so-secret weapon in the Smith Street Band. The album was full of great, sweaty, powerful, uplifting melodic punk rock songs, each with a distinct and uniquely Australian flavour. But Wagner's stream of consciousness storytelling is one of the record's most endearing characteristics. Some may find his overly wordy delivery tiring, but his lyrics are the key to the emotional punch the record so frequently packs. When Wagner sings, things get better but they never get good on Death to the Lads, you know he's coming from a very real, very human and honest place. And that's nothing to be scared of. So did this record scare anyone? <laughs> <laughs> well, there's a lot of real raw emotion in there. I guess that could be scary for a lot of people, couldn't it? And you? Well, no, I wasn't scared, but I was impressed. More mm -hmm. impressed than I expected. Um, I liked the variety on, on the record. You know, it went for that real sort of raw emotional moments where, you know, it's just Will singing and very mm. little else going on. And then they have like, seem to have a choir at some point. Yeah, they do. Um, and then there was one song, I think it was called Death to the Lads, mm -hmm. that there was like this sort of weird epic uh, 1980s guitar solo in there. And it sounded <laughs> like something the darkness would, would write now or yeah. something like that. So I just thought it was really varied and but seemed to come from a really honest place, you know, with those yeah. sort of confessional lyrics and stuff. So yeah. yeah, I enjoyed it. Really enjoyed it. That's good. Yeah, the mm -hmm. choir is interesting. It, you know, it, that choirs can come across a little bit mawkish yeah. or a little yeah. bit kind of really sort Especially of... Especially in this sort of a recording as well, right. really raw recording. Like, yeah. where would the choir go in this sweat exactly. stained studio? Exactly. Sorry for them. Yeah, but it, it didn't come across like that at all. It actually fit really, really nicely, I thought. Yeah. I love the fact that there's just this great run of Melbourne bands who tell stories, um, personal stories, mm. narratives, observational things, just whatever. They're not all the same, but there's just such a strong... Um, grounding there in, in being natural and being real um, and connecting with people by, by just being the kind of person you might, you might find at the, at the end of the bar at a, at a pub if people mm -hmm. still go to pubs. Or, or as, as he would say, can I buy you a cider? I think there's one left on the rider. Yeah. So I believe it was one of the lyrics to it. Yeah, I don't know. When I, I've been see, watching these guys since like Blood, Sweat and Beers at the Annandale like sort of eight, mm. ten years ago or whatever. And, I sort of, on the first listen, I was this guy, I think it's more of that mid-tempo, earnest, bro core Poison City rock. But then I kind of, I got into that place where it is, like maybe I, I am a little bit cynical sometimes. And so <laughs> I, but when I got right into that world, I was like, oh man, now I get it now. And I don't mind the way that you pronounced yo yo instead of you. <laughs> yeah. when you I just want yo you to know. <laughs> like, that's fine. I was into it. I was into it. Um, yeah, there was, I think... Um, the, what's that song? Was it laughing or pretending to laugh at the end? Like, he's just obviously, his heart's on his sleeve. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it gets a little bit like too cloying for me. Like, and I think you're saying they sing about what they know or the realness. And obviously, since the last album, all the Smith Street Man has done is toured. Mm. And so a lot of the songs are about Will backstage or, you know, freaking out on stage in Germany mm -hmm. or at a TV show in Ger Germany. And um, I think that's the danger in writing an album after you get big and you play all the time you don't sort of, your lyrics are less relatable because the fans aren't really, they don't know about that stuff. But, but I was going to say, maybe, they're, maybe that is like aspiring, you know, people listen to that and go, yeah, man, that's what I want to know about. Mm. You know. I actually found the lyrics um, really relatable because mm. I think that's an interesting point, the fact that they're on tour and, mm. and so much, you know, when bands do that, they can make these road albums. And, yeah, yeah. But just the way he tells stories, I found it really, whether I know what it's like to be on stage in Germany mm. or not, I just empathized with what he yeah. was talking about and really felt that. Yeah, I mean, I guess, I guess it's the emotions that you have while you're doing that and those emotions in the universe. Well, he's yeah. on the yeah. road, but it's essentially a breakup album. I well, mean, yeah, we can yeah. all relate to that. I mean, mm. and the stuff that he's going through all the time doesn't necessarily mean he's only going through it because he's in a band. You know, he has those yeah. moments, I think, where he talks about, like, uh, 
how he's something to do with his phone like he either didn't want to look up from his phone because she wasn't right. going to be there yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I thought that was really interesting because everything else they seem to listen to these days they're sort of slamming our use of technology yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. which might allude to albums coming later oh, in the okay, show yeah. but um, you know that, that kind of idea that oh we live in this real narcissistic world whereas mm -hmm. he's kind of saying looking at his phone seems to remind him of her yeah. and, and he's like and he's, he's, like he's like starting a fight with someone on his phone as well yeah. when, he's, when he's backstage probably in Germany yeah <laughs> depending on where yeah. it was written so and the song cool. birthday as well when uh you know, I, it sounds like it's about just meeting someone and working over in your head that this person's great and we're going to get married and we're going to have kids. <laughs> we're going to name our son and our daughters and And then at the end of it, he's like, oh, hey, my name's Will. Like, I just thought that, <laughs> yeah. that's, that's a, it's a really that's nice true. thing. And I think it's a great album, so I'm giving it four stars. Not a